to the Lord. We can get a message by airplane. We can get a message by train. We can get a message by ocean of Zion. Gotta fall out on my knees and pray. stubborn against the work of the enemy. Come on, amen. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I thank God you're here tonight because you told the devil, I'm not going to quit. You know you done been at the borderline, amen, ready to step your foot over into the land of no return. But God didn't let you do it. Thank you. Amen. It's because we have hope. Without hope, amen, we would have stepped over there. All right. Amen. Amen. If I can do nothing else or say anything else tonight, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 Somebody said in the old school, and I use that phrase a lot, old school, talk is cheap. Yes. Amen. Anybody ever heard that phrase? Amen. Talk is cheap. The Bible said, be careful. Mm -hmm. What you say, you sneer by the words of your mouth, is very important. What you say. Amen. We're learning that as a body of people, a body of believers. Amen. We've been in a mess a lot of times because of what we said. Yes. So God is teaching us how to speak. And he gave us a shepherd to show us, amen, 
how to speak, and we see that you sneer by the words of your mouth because he's 46. And he looked 46 because he said he's 46. <laughs> I had a, a program that I was trying to put on for my husband. I'm going to give this little testimony. Everybody forgive me for my sins, all sins forgiven. Amen. You sneer with the words of your mouth. Amen. Everybody sins forgiven. No, 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 no. Glory to God. Lord, have your way in this service. Minister to every need. Break and destroy the heavy yokes. And lift the heavy burdens. Lord, cause the eyes of the blind to come open. The ears that are dull of hearing. You hear what your spirit is saying, Lord. Use my vessel for your glory. God, I move out of the way that you can have your way in this service. In Jesus' name. Amen. But I, I it's a program that I wanted my husband to watch. And I'm going to tell you how my husband is. Amen. I have to just put it on without really telling him. You know, the spirit of the Lord speaks through him often. So, you know, if you put a movie on for my husband, he'll be the told you to end already. And if it don't end up like he wanted, he don't want to see it. So what I have to do, I just put it on. I don't give him no warning. I just put it on. And generally, his testimony is this. He'll start out. And he's watching it, and I look over and I say, are you, are you listening? He's asleep. It's like a five-minute sleeping pill for him. If he make it five minutes through a movie, it's a miracle. He doesn't do that. But this particular night, I was tired. I don't even know if I made it five minutes through the movie. But what I do know is that when I woke up that morning, because I try to be careful what goes in my ear, what's in the atmosphere. Amen. I try to make sure I'm on a Christian stage and they're preaching to me while I'm asleep. You know, I can, you know, because I'm trying to get my girls saved, my four naked girls. I'm trying to get them saved too. Amen. So I want them to, you know, fall out in the spirit. Amen. Be some good little girls. Amen. And they're good. Some good babies. Amen. But I'm, what I'm trying to get around to say is that when I woke up that next morning, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When I woke up the next morning, it was a program on that really I don't watch, but it was on and it was Deal or No Deal for those of you all that know it. How many know Deal or No Deal? It's a game show. I call it, amen, uh, gambling because you're taking a chance. Amen. Anytime you're taking a chance, that's gambling. Amen. But what I noted about Deal or No Deal for the little whatever you call it you know it's a lot of episodes to it but there were times when the people actually had the million dollar case right. but by the time they got through scaring them up and making them feel like alright now you're this and they end up selling out that million dollar case amen for something less because of fear that's put on them amen hallelujah because of fear that's put on them. We have what it takes. Amen. Satan wants us to give up what we have as though what we have is not good. Amen. See, the Bible says the devil is a liar. He's the father of all liars. Amen. What we have is the best that it is. The best. Now, I'm, I'm one that I go along with Isaiah. And Isaiah gave the testimony of what God told him. I made everything by myself. You know, I don't know about you, but if I do something by myself, I'm so proud. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I want everybody to know, I got no help. I did that by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> glory to God. I don't want nobody else to get that glory. I did that. What is the same thing with God? He said, let everything that have breath praise who? The Lord. I want my glory. He said, you see them heavens? You talking about all them signs? I got a picture on my tablet right now when I took a picture of the heavens because it had the symbol of a cross on it. Amen. You don't see that. Glory to God. I love rainbows. I like the, the, the times when you're riding down the road and, and you see the clouds and amen and then the ray of the sun just spreads out. That glory. Oh my goodness. And there are times when it, it opens up and it looks like you can almost go up in into the clouds. I, mean, I like to look at things like that. And this is what 
God said. He said the heavens declare my handiwork. And I tell you, you don't even know what all God is showing you in heaven. He might be giving you images of angels in the clouds. Amen. Hallelujah. He might be giving you images of different things. And you know, you look and say, oh, that looks like a horse. Oh, look at that. That looks like that. And you always think of things. God, does, it shows God's handiwork. Amen. He is an awesome God. He's an awesome God, but he loves you. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what's happening in this world. Amen? Somebody might want to hit me on the head for saying that, but really I'm truthful. But I want you to understand what I mean. I care about the welfare of people. But what I'm saying is come what may. Whatever is going on in this world, amen, people are getting overwhelmed. They're getting afraid, amen, because that's what human nature does. It gets afraid when things get overwhelming. But what I know is no matter what's going on in the world, good or bad, God loves you. Amen. Don't you let that devil tell you nothing different because he is lying. The man of God told us a while ago, he said, grab the scripture and hold on to it. That is going to help you through the hard times. Amen. And there are several scriptures that I grab a hold to. One of them that resonates with me is the fact that God said, Lo, I'll be with you always. Now, when God says always, I don't care how dark it is, how black it is, amen, what the situation is like, God is there. Amen. Might feel like your prayers are going to the heaven and coming back on your head, but God is there. Amen. Because if he's not, then he lied and he can't lie. Amen. See, that's what I want. I, that's another scripture. I am not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I should repent. I need you to keep that in your head because God will not lie. Amen. He said, if I said it, I'll do it. Yes, if I said it, I need you to focus on that. If I said it, I'll do it. Amen. If I spoke it, I'm going to make good of what I say. See, if I say it, amen, you have right to question. The Bible said, man's heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You'll say one thing out of your mouth and do something different. You mean well when you say it? I go to Peter's testimony. You remember? When he said he was getting ready to go to Jerusalem? First he had to go get Lazarus up. Amen? Glory to God. And when he went to go get Lazarus, they said, why are you going there? You know they're trying to kill you already. See, when somebody love you for real, they will hazard their life for you. They will put their life on the line for you. Amen. Oh, glory. See, when I was reading the word today, I, I found myself just sitting there crying as I read the word. And I'm going to tell you why I was crying. Because I thought about what this God did for us. And what really made me weep and cry, and I might be just jumping way ahead of myself. Do you remember the story of Lazarus? How many of you remember the story of Lazarus? Since St. John chapter 11, you can read it for yourself when you get home. But what I read in St. John, and it really just kind of stuck in my head today when I read it. read it so many times, but you know how certain so You just have to be in that place to receive what God is telling you. And this is what they said. Martha and Mary, you know, we didn't talk about Martha and Mary. They were Lazarus' sisters. And they sent a message to Jesus. Courtney, hey, hey, what you doing? Courtney, what, what you doing? Huh? You showing? You showing out? You gonna do better? Okay, then. <laughs> But this is what Mary and Martha said to Jesus. They sent a message to him. And I want you to hear what the message was. You can go back and read it. The message was, Master or Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. Do you know that God loves you tonight? Do you realize the love that God has? If you can just grab a hold of that, when I never tell you, God don't love you. You did too sinful. Mm -hmm. You did this and you did that. I'm jumping all over the place. If I forget to come back, you remind me. But this is the message I've been telling people. We have been in captivity.
captivity. We have been in bondage. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 14. That Satan himself. Opened not the house of his prisoners. Who were his prisoners? The people of God. The unbeliever. The wicked as well as the righteous. They were prisoners in hell. Because there was nobody on this earth who could live a sin-free life that could die for the sins of the world. You see, in order to die for the sins of the world, why would anybody have to die for the sins of the world anyway? Because man failed. Man disobeyed God. We remember the scriptures. In the book of Genesis, you know, God spoke to Adam. And he said, Adam, don't, don't touch it. You can have, you can eat whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Eat from any tree in this garden that you want. But it's only one tree that I'm asking you not to eat from. And that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What was next to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? The tree of life. They were both in the midst of the garden. They were right smack dab in the center. Now you imagine he could have walked right next to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and took from the tree of life. He could have walked all around it, amen, but he could not touch the tree of the knowledge. Knowledge of good and evil. Amen? And then he added this to it. If you do, if you don't listen at me and you feel like you got more than what I have and you eat from this tree, he said this, you shall surely Without question. You're going to surely die. Amen. 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 You shall surely die. And the Bible says Satan. Just like he does today. Amen. I don't know. And I'm not trying to get in your personal business. But if there's anybody. I'll put it that way. If there's anybody in this place that knows what it is to be in bondage to nicotine, you don't know, amen, that there's a mentality that you have. You're in captivity. But you're saying the devil got you out. You can get off when you get ready. You can quit when you get ready. You're not bound. I'm going to tell you something. You'll know when you're bound when you read on a package that says warning, I'm going to kill you. And you can't stop taking it. Amen. You can't stop using it. Amen. You'll know when you're bound when that habit that you have is destroying you inwardly and your body is going to tell you that you're being destroyed. Before man announces hmm we did the x-rays and we see that you have cirrhosis of the liver. Amen. You felt that thing cut breath off. You saw the warnings. But you couldn't quit. Why? Why couldn't you quit? Because your master nicotine said, you ain't fixing to quit. <laughs> your master nicotine said, amen, my today, my master, amen, you couldn't get free on your own. That was your master. And you did what he told you to do despite the warning. Just like Adam and Eve. Because Satan spoke to them and said, let me tell you something, woman. You are not fixing to die. Don't you listen at God. You're not going to die. You're going to live. He's hiding something from you. He just doesn't want you to know, amen, that you're going to be just like him. He doesn't want you to be like him. He knows that when you, the day that you eat thereof, you're going to be as God's. How many people in the Bible said the devil calls good evil and evil good? He makes right be wrong and wrong be right. Amen. He wants God to be wrong and him to be right. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that we wrestle with, whatever has you in captivity and you know, whether it's low self-esteem, we always say alcohol and drugs. But what about that demon of anxiety, that demon of unforgiveness, and, and that demon of low self-esteem? What about those spirits? What about that stealing spirit and that lying demon, amen? And all those demons that keep you in captivity to where you can't get free. Come on, man. You can't get free without Jesus. Amen. And those demons that have you in captivity. 
gravity. You wonder why the struggle is so great. Because your master, low self-esteem, your master suicide, your master alcohol, your master whatever it is that you're in bondage to, tell you, hey amen, what do you think you're doing? What you doing talking about, hey amen, you finna get free and you going to church, you a lie, hey amen, you get over there and get them drugs right now, you get over there and get that alcohol right now, who do you think you are, hey amen, drop your head down, don't be trying to hold your head up like you somebody, hey amen, hallelujah, when you get off trying to get away from me, you get over there and do what I tell you to do. Because that's what it's like when you're bound by a habit, whatever it is. What you doing up here trying to tell the truth? You get over there and tell a lie. What you doing talking about? You go, amen. You forgive them and release them. You don't forgive them. They did you wrong, amen. You keep them in the unforgiveness. What's wrong with you? Get over there and do what I said. That's what those spirits, that's what they do. And you wonder why you can't get free. Oh, you skipped the day of smoking, amen. What do you think you're doing? You ain't think you get over there and do double this time. Get that pack of cigarettes, amen. Overlook that morning and you do it. You see, that's what the devil told Adam and Eve. What you doing listening to that God? He's lying to you. You're not going to die. You get over there and eat that fruit. What he wasn't telling them is release me so I can destroy you. Lord, my Lord. And when they ate from that forbidden tree, amen. And I say this just as soon as somebody say no, your flesh want to do it. Yes. Amen. 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 God said no. But that demon of deception, that lying demon said, Oh no, I'm telling you the truth, God is lying to you. Yes. How many people know when they ate from that forbidden tree? Tree, they felt death. Amen. Amen. The Bible said their eyes came open to the knowledge of good and evil. And guess what? They're doing something they had never felt the need to do before. They're hiding from God. But you see, this God, see, don't try God. God told them, we remember the story about manna. He said, you can go out every day and you can pick it, but just don't, don't say nothing for tomorrow. I'm going to provide for you every day. This is what God is telling us today. I'll meet your need every day. You are more value than, than any flower, than any bird. Amen. They're not working. You don't, these birds don't have no job. But God provides their food. We hate to hit animals in the road. So the bird told me, your son hit an animal. He didn't want to hit that animal. He messed his car up. But guess what? God was feeding somebody else. God was feeding other animals. Amen. God provides for his. Yes. He's a provider. Yes. He's a comforter. Amen. That devil, all oh, God's a lie. He can't do all that by himself. He needs some help. Amen. You looking for God for comfort. You, you don't look to God for comfort. Amen. Nigga thing to you get over there and get that cigarette. You going through. Amen. That alcohol demons. You get over there and get some alcohol. You going through. They're your comforters. Amen. You get over there and find you somebody. Your comforters. When I get stressed out and I got a lot of pressure on me, I, I got to have a cigarette. What about Jesus? The devil is saying God is not enough. You got to have something else. You got to have somebody else. You, you got to fight. But those that are bound by fighting demon. And you say, I'm going to quit fighting. I'm going to do better than that demon. And fight and say, What do you think you're doing? You get over there and fight somebody. Fight the air. That old suicide thing. What do you think you're doing? Getting happy? Get over there and hit that tree. Run off that road. You jump off that bridge right now. You do what I tell you. You get in a hurry. Jesus. If it's God that we serve, He said, I need you to hear me now. He said, I'll be more than a whole world against you. I'm more than a whole world, and God cannot lie. He said, don't you say no man until tomorrow. He said, I'm going to provide you tomorrow. Amen. How many people know just because God said no, they wouldn't save some for tomorrow because God might not be able to provide. And the Bible said it bread worms and it's stank. God said, look at man, so pretty, they're going to trust me. Amen. 
And then he told them on that sixth day, provide enough for two days. I won't let it be orange this time. But just don't go out in the field and look for none on the seventh day. How many people know they went straight out to the field and looked for some on the seventh day? Because that devil, their master, was always telling them, oh, God really didn't mean what he said. I mean, he's really not going to do that. God has always been faithful to his word. And the Bible says this, John 3, 16, we know it. For God so loved, he didn't say the Christians. He didn't say the amen, the, the rich people. He said the world. That, left, that, that included uh, us sinners. The one that made more mistakes than a little bit. The ones, amen, that was low self-esteem. The one that was bound by whatever habit, amen. The sinners, God love you. Because he cannot lie. He can't lie. So what happens? Man brought the curse on themselves. But Adam and Eve ate from that tree. The Bible said they shall die. They lost their life. Not only did they do it, but it fell on all of us. We all fell up under that curse. Amen. So we had absolutely nothing to look forward to but death in hell. Amen. People don't like to hear that word hell, but I, I want it to resonate with you. Get hell, hell, hell into your spirit so you can stay away from there. Right. So you can't avoid it and be free. Deal with it. Amen. Amen. The curse was there. Amen. God has to do It's like a king sealing something with his seal. It can't be broken. Amen. Amen. It's there. It's done. When God speaks it, it's done. It will not be altered. Oh, yeah. God have mercy. Yes, he does. But God's word will never be changed. As a matter of fact, God will go upon those that would even alter the word. We're not talking about the mistakes and the, and the little things that go on with the interpretation from one language to the other. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about making God be a liar. You know? And because the curse was upon them, ye shall surely die. They couldn't come off and up under that curse. They could pray all they wanted to pray. They weren't coming off and up under that curse. Because God's word was not going to be a lie. So what was God going to do? What he already knew he had to do in the beginning that went before that seventh day he had already created himself a body because he knew he was going to come and deliver us. He stepped down to understand what we were going through with the flesh and what made us so rebellious and disobedient. What made everybody that existed including Enoch who was not and he pleased God that he sinned one time because had he not he would have been the one to die for the world. The sacrifice had to be without spot and without blemish. Amen. Sin free. Perfect. Amen. There was only one. His name was Jesus. Amen. And this is what he said. I'm going to start from the womb. So I'll know what the babies go through. I know what the toddlers go through. I know every phase of your life, God knew what we went through. He went through. He said he was in all points tempted. Just like us. And you know the things you've been tempted with. Right. The only difference is he was without sin. And he never yielded. Amen. That it goes all the way to the thoughts of his mind. Amen. Resist the devil. That let you know he's going to come. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus knew the promise had to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Death was the promise yeah. for the disobedient. Mm -hmm. Jesus had not committed sin. He stood in our place. Don't tell me God doesn't love you. Yes. The one that's without sin will give his life for yours. Will take your place because the punishment had to be fulfilled. We were going to hell. Now what I know about hell Amen. Mm -hmm. There are different parts of hell. It is. I know that from the story of the testimony of Lazarus and the rich man. When Abraham told the rich man, there's a big gulf fix between you and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And the rich man said, but all I want is for him to come down, dip his finger in water, so he can do what? Cool my tongue. So that let me know it's hot in hell. Amen. It's hot in hell, because you can dip your finger in some water right now, put it in your tongue, it ain't gonna do nothing for you. But this man was fixing to be cooled, he felt like. But I also know about hell is that those that are in there, they are not burned up like paper. Understand. 
Here we can burn up. Here people get cremated. Here people burn up in their cars because we're flesh. But in your eternity, you have a glorified body. That glorified body doesn't burn up. That glorified body is very sensitive. And what I mean by that, amen, there are some of you all in here, and I probably almost can faithfully say just about all of you have been through pains in your body so severe that you can even think straight. I heard somebody say on more than one occasion, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I don't care if it's been a toothache. Whatever that pain was that you knew, if it would have lasted any longer, and some of it did last a while, and you don't even know how you made it through, couldn't even think straight, you were numb for the pain. Let me tell you, the worst pain that you have ever felt will be nothing. It's a drop in the bucket compared to the pain that you feel in hell. How do you know that? Because the word of God tells me in hell with their glorified bodies there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what I know about hell. What I also know about hell is the Bible said their worms die not. Now I don't know if they have a glorified body or what. Because you can burn a worm up here. But in hell their worms die not. I don't know if they're special worms or do they too have a glorified body. But what I do know, it's not a scenario that anybody wants to be in. How many want to raise your hand and say you want to be in hell? Up under that situation. And yet it's God that said, I love the world. He took our place. He let this flesh be beat. He allowed himself to be slapped and spit on. He allowed the hairs to be pulled off his body. The Bible said they placed a crown on his head. They mocked him. Stripped him of his clothes. Tried to strip him of his pride. Ridiculed him. Let's see where the governor say if he'll have him. That wasn't good enough. After mocking him and making fun of him, amen, they took the reed out of his hand and they used it like a hammer to nail the nails into his head. He took it. For a bunch of sinners. For a bunch of people that didn't even believe in him. He took it. He took being talked about. Laughed at. And I think of all the things that happened to Jesus that hurt so much. What hurt more was the ones that said, we'll go with you and we'll die with you. Peter, who said, Lord, though the whole world will save you, I want and everybody else said the same thing. And you'll read in the word of God. I'm going to read it in a few minutes in Matthew 26 and in Mark. Amen. That they all left him in his time of need. Cursing and using profanity. And he looked Jesus in the eye. When he saw Judas and he pleaded with him at that table to get him to turn from that way, but the devil entered into him and said, You get over there and betray Jesus. And because he prayed through, he was able to call him friend. Amen. Yeah. Who can call the enemy friend? Let Jesus would be up for us. He allowed himself to go through everything that his body went through with as he hung on that cross and he was whipped with a cat of nine tails. They didn't just use one whip. They didn't want the whip to be single. They was taking out all the anger and the rage that was in him. They used that to, they, that to let him feel it. Oh, believe me, there's not a pain you've ever been through with that Jesus has not felt. Amen. He said, I took the stripes of your healing. The Bible says, I mean, he stood there and said, Lord, why are you forsaking me? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Oh, they felt good about that. The thieves talked about him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Before that man said, that thief said, remember me and, and, and when you in, in the Father's kingdom. Before that, he ridiculed him just like the rest. Matthew yes. tell you that too. Yes. They cast the same in his teeth. And the Bible said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He's alone. But he said this because he loved us. Yeah. 
I would be afraid. I'm coming to kill you. My ear gets cut off, and the one I'm trying to kill puts it back on. Oh, what he went through for us. Amen. Amen. And this God that we serve. Amen. He said this. Put that sword on. I sometimes paraphrase it. Peter, put that thing up when you hurt yourself. If you fight with the sword, you'll die with the sword. Peter was willing to die in battle. But that's not the battle God wanted. Fighting each other won't bring forth deliverance. Amen. And he told him this. You don't get it. You don't understand. I can talk, talk, talk to my father right now. He'll send me more than 12 legions of angels to deliver me. But because of the love he had for a bunch of sinners, he refused to do it. He went to that cross. When he laid his head in his shoulder, he, before he gave up the ghost, he gave it up. Because it wasn't taken from him. Amen. There were two things, several things that he did. First of all, he made sure his mother was straightened out. Amen. 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 He released us from our sins. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Let me tell you that darkness from the 12th to the 9th hour, 6th to the 9th hour, I believe with all my heart, yes, it, it represented the time that they were in. It was real dark. Amen. But the word of God's a touch, not my anointing, my prophet, no harm. Yeah. You don't know, amen. Just like them angels were surrounding the enemy for Elijah, amen. Them people were surrounded, amen. All Jesus had to do was speak a word, and they were all going to be destroyed just like that. Amen. amen. God wasn't happy. Yeah. Amen. amen. But the word of God says this. He spoke what he spoke, released us of our sins. He bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. Now, what I need you to understand is when Jesus gave up the ghost, he could have easily went back in his father's bosom. Amen? He could have went back and sat on the right hand of God. But then the word wouldn't be fulfilled. It would make God out of a lie. He went straight down to hell instead of going to the right hand of the father. Why? Because he had to go get those that trusted in him, that believed that he would not die lie. Amen. Those, amen, that it went through what they went through and stayed faithful to God. Amen. That Satan had in captivity. Satan would not release them just like these habits. Amen. They ain't gonna let you go. Amen. But God is the one that frees you. God is the one that delivers you. Amen. We realize amen that whatever it was that we were bound within the world, the only reason we're free is because God freed us. I want you to understand this God that we serve that came down in the flesh named Jesus, went down in a place where the worms die not, went down in a place where it's hot as hell, went down in a place where there's weeping and gnashing of tree, and the Bible says in Corinthians, the last enemy that was destroyed was death. He took the key of death from Satan. Three days and three nights, the Bible says one day is as a thousand years of thought. Jesus stayed in hell. And get up. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He did that for us. A bunch of sinners. Don't tell me God doesn't love us. How many is going to go to hell for you? They might go to hell out the wheel. And it won't be for you. <laughs> don't let the devil tell you God don't love you. Because you have committed so many things wrong. We have committed a lot of things wrong. Amen. Amen. And yet he went to hell for us. Got up. And, and gave us power. Over all. He didn't say some. Over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. With that being said. We go to John 11. Thank you Jesus. St. John chapter 11. And I'm getting back to what Mary and Martha said to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 
Jesus. Now a certain man, 11 and 1, was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and Martha, where Mary and her sister Martha. Notice we said in verse 2, we give you clear understanding, amen, of what God was doing. I love the Lord Jesus. Verse 2 says, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Amen? It was that Mary. Now, if you'll turn with me, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, to Matthew, no, I want to do Luke 7, the book of Luke, chapter 7. We're going to come back to John, but go to Luke 7. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to spout on Mary and Martha and Lazarus. <laughs> this is what the word of God says. Luke 7, verse 36. Luke 7 and 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Now, we're going to read in John that that Pharisee was a man named Simon. But right now, it just says one of the Pharisees invited him to come to his house. Now, he invited Jesus. He didn't invite Jesus' posse. Come on, people of God. I want you. I don't want your children. I want you. I don't, I don't want your companion. I just want you. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says this. Verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city. Her name was Mary. But notice what it says about her. Which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet, Behind him. She couldn't even raise her head up. She could feel all them darts going in her back. She stood behind him weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears. And did wipe them with the hairs of her head. And kissed his feet. And anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bid him saw it. He spake within himself. He didn't even say it out loud. But he said within himself saying. This man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him. She's a sinner! And Jesus answering and said unto him, Simon, I've got something to say to you. I have something, we know his name is Simon. I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, say on, master. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly gave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. And he wasn't talking about no funny perverted kiss either. Right. Verse 46, my head with oil, thou didst not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. This is what it says. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Thank you, Jesus. Here, wherefore, verse 47, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many? Many. She had many sins. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this? that forgiveth sins also. And he said to the woman, Thy faith 
have saved thee. Go in peace. Go back to John 11. The same Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. This woman, that was a sinner whose sins were forgiven, but this is what she said. Verse 3. Therefore, his sisters, Mary and Martha, sick sinners. I'm going to say ex sinners. Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha had one understanding when it came down to their Lord. Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness, he denounced it. He spoke against it. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thy, thereby. That's what he said. My God. It's not unto death. Uh, Amen? Amen? And yet Lazarus died. What? Isn't that the message everybody is saying today? Amen. God, you're a liar. And he's telling us again, I am not a man that I should lie. Amen. Neither am I the son of man that I should repent. How do you explain that? But I'm going to say what the man of God tells us. He said, amen. If you don't allow the devil to bring you into captivity in your mind, you're not in prison. People that are standing on the word of God, amen, their flesh might, as the word of God says, go to sleep. But they're not dead. This is not unto death. But that the, for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he didn't run. He had to feel it. He about two days still in the same place where he was. You know, Kevin, last week you ain't even moved. Well, it's time you move. Amen? Yeah. Verse 7. Then after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone me. Are you sure you want to go there? He already did. Just let him stay where he's at. But you save yourself. Amen. Amen. Goest thou thither again? Verse 9. Jesus answered, Are there not what? Twelve. twelve. Did he say six? No. He said twelve. That's twelve hours in the day. Amen. Didn't say anything about night, but it's twelve hours in the day. Are there not twelve hours in the day? We know there's a 24 hour day, which consists of twelve hours night and twelve hours day. Amen? He said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And notice what he said. If any man walk in the day, he's not going to stumble. Now, we all have learned from personal experience. You're going to stumble at night. Our eyes can adjust and you can still stumble. You can see shadows. You know, it's a shadow either of a car or of some tree or whatever. You don't see no details and you can stumble. Amen? Amen. I said that for a reason. Because we were raised up in this world. I don't know about all society, but I know here in America. We were raised up, amen, you hear people say, amen, and I tell you, amen, Satan wants to twist our minds to make us believe what he wants us to believe. He wants us to believe that if we had a cracker, that's the body of Jesus. You're not looking at a cracker. You're not looking at a cracker. You're looking at Jesus. You're looking at Jesus' body. No, it's a cracker. If it look like a cracker and it feel like a cracker, it's a cracker. Amen. Now, I'm from the Catholic Church. We don't do crackers. We do that flat, pasty bread. It's in a circle. Amen. It's bread made out of God knows what, but it's not Jesus' body. And they know they're operating off of the Bible that eat my flesh and drink my blood. My flesh is, 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 is meat indeed. Amen. They're going off of that. But it's not. 
So man or Satan, amen, up under obedience to their master, Satan. Amen. I am saying that. Have convinced us that God lied. Amen. What do you mean? Well, Genesis tells us that the evening and the, how many read that? Amen. Raise your hands if you read that the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. Now, what did you not read? You did not read that the morning and the evening were the first day. We never read that. Amen. God was consistent. Mm -hmm. He never changed. Amen. He didn't revise it. The evening and the morning were the first all the way up. And the last day it said he rested. Amen. Amen. The last day he sanctified mm -hmm. as a day of rest. Yeah. We call it the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. When does man celebrate the Sabbath? The first day, the exact opposite of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because you see, Satan is the exact opposite of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Satan is darkness, God is light. Amen. 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 Not only is it, we know that Satan once used to be light, so he didn't forget where he used to be. The Bible said he remembers he'll disguise himself as an angel of light. Yeah. He knows what light is. Amen. But now he's darkness. Exactly. The Bible said in Ephesians 5 that we were darkness. In other words, we were controlled by Satan. But now we light in the Lord. Yes. Yes. Walk as children of light. In other words, now we're controlled by light. Yes. We got the Holy Ghost light is in you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say this very simply. I'm not even going to make it complicated. Amen. Mm -hmm. God tells us in John 11. When you walk in the night, you'll stumble. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. You can stumble over things in the daytime too, but it's only because you're not paying attention. Right. But you can see it. Amen. Amen. But at nighttime, you can't see it. Amen. Everything is a little blurry and it's, it's not. Light reveals what's in darkness. Yeah. Amen. 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 That means when you get the Holy Ghost, that is in you that's not of God, it's going to be revealed. Yeah. It's revealed by the, top, the fire, it's revealed by the text. Amen? Amen. So if God said there's 12 hours a day, there's 12 hours of night. Now what Genesis tells us, amen, because people don't understand how can you start a day and even what we actually do, we start the day one second after the middle. Now I'm going to tell you something. You give me half of a pie. You're not going to tell me I'm on a new pie and I ain't got the other half. It's not a whole pot. You're not going to tell me, amen, for those of you all that wash your own, I'm going to wash your own clothes. Are you going to take your wash out right after the wash in the middle of the rinse and take it out and say it's done? Mm -hmm. You're going to wait till that cycle finish. Yes, You're not going to bake a cake and take it out half done and say it's done. Right. And then we well, the same thing with the time. My God. You're not going to amen go and we recognize that 12 is the middle and then start a new day when you ain't got the other half of the night. You're not going to say amen with Satan have convinced people. I did say Satan. Satan have convinced people to say good morning. It's pitch black. You're getting ready to go to bed. And I'm telling you something. You can't confuse morning with evening. You can't confuse morning with darkness. Amen. This is what the word of God says. And I'm just going to put this as simply as I possibly can. We're going to go back to John 11. But amen. St. Genesis chapter 1. And this is what it says. Um, okay. We begin with reading 1. I'm not going no further than 5. I'm just going to read the first 5 verses. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Amen. Now, in my Bible, God is with a capital G, and it doesn't have an S on the end, which means one God. Amen. Amen. God did it all by himself. He didn't have no help. But he, he, he spoke his word, and the word went out and did it. God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was, and it gives you a description of the earth in verse 2. The first thing it said about the earth is it was without form. It was empty, void of life. And three, darkness. Amen. Darkness was here. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, which means water was here. Yeah. And it says this, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Notice what it says in verse 3. And God said, let there be light. It wasn't ever a time that we read in the Word of God where God said, let there be darkness. Yeah. Have anybody ever read that in the Word of God? That he said, let there be darkness? No, because it was already here. Amen. It was already here. So since darkness was here first, it began.
begins to make. Then the light comes. Let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4. And God saw the light. The light is good. Amen. Amen. And what did God do? He divided good from evil. He divided light from darkness. There's a division. Now the way we do it today, we combine them. We start the evening at 6 and right smack dab in the middle of the evening, we call it morning. We combine, that's against scripture. There's a division between light and darkness. There's no agreement. One second after 12, it's not morning. It's still dark outside. It's still evening. Amen? Amen? Yeah. This is what the word of God says. God saw the light, verse 4, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God, notice what he said in verse 5. I need you to focus on this. God called the light what? Yeah. All light is day. As long as you see light, it's day. Then he said this. Thank you, Jesus. And the darkness he called night. One second after midnight is still night. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, as we call a.m., is still dark. He called, amen, the darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. Night. Amen. That's what God called it. Amen. He called the darkness night. And darkness received the word evening. Twelve hours. Evening. Not six. But twelve. If we confess that twelve midnight is the middle of the night, you got another half of the night to go. So right now, we would call this Friday evening. That's what we call it. To call this Friday evening and tomorrow Saturday morning, we're saying the morning and the evening were the first day. What are we doing? The exact opposite of what God said. He did not say the morning and the evening. If we make this be Friday evening, we put morning before evening. That's not what God said. He said, the evening, what am I telling you? If you can process it this way, when you wake up, whether you wake up at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, but when you wake up, half of that day is already over. Up. It feels like a new day because the sun is rising. It's almost like spring. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The life, especially if you're going through when, when nighttime is hell to you when you're going through a delusion. We call it a delusion. The world calls it sickness. And you can't wait for the day. Day has great significance for me because for me, daylight means no more troubles, no more sorrows. You've entered into the rest. You can sleep when you're sick in the daytime. But at nighttime, you're being traumatized. The devil is beating the daylights out of you. You're afraid. Everybody else is asleep and you are so alone. But when daylight comes, it's like new hope. Jesus was daylight in a dark time. Amen. A time when the people of God were being persecuted. Amen. They were afraid. Amen. To even mention anything about the Savior, the God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. They were afraid to mention anything about God Almighty because they might be killed for it. And here comes this man in the midst of such a tumultuous time. And he's talking about he's the son of the Father. He came to give life. He's giving miracles. He's speaking openly. And they are so upset with him. But the love that he had for us, amen, he did it for us. Amen. And he said this work while it's day. But darkness comes when no man can work. Amen. He was talking about the last day. Amen. But back then, they didn't have inside lights like we do. Electricity like we do. Amen. They, they did it differently. So they had to work from sunrise to sunset. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All of evil is right. And all of day, don't, don't let anybody, and you know we didn't have a problem with it. Prideful people didn't have a problem with saying good morning at night time. They didn't have a problem saying that. Because Satan can take man's mind and twist it any way he wants. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, if you will. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let me finish before I go to Colossians. Let me finish reading John 11. And John 11, let's finish that up. Because I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Thank you, Jesus. This is what God says. The Bible says this, verse 7, Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. Verse 8, His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late saw the stone thee, and goest thou thither again. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. In other words, amen, you're in the spirit, and God is ministering to you, and he helps you to see beyond the surface, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he, do, he shall do well. How did Jesus spake of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go now. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, I know, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. And I'm going to jump down a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. And then he gets to where Lazarus is. Mary and Martha come to him. Amen. And he said this, verse 40, Jesus said unto her, said, I am not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Amen. You heard me from the foundation of the world. And I knew everything is past. I knew. He didn't say I know. He said I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they which may believe, that they, forgive me, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. One time. Mm -hmm. This is what I say about God and Satan. They had already had a run in. God knew Satan. He knows how he thinks. He created him. Mm -hmm. Satan knew God. Mm -hmm. Not like he should have, because had he knew him right, he would have never, amen, got conspiracy going on in heaven. But one thing that Satan knew about God, first of all, a liar was not carrying his eyesight. So when God demanded of him, he told God the truth. He's a liar, the father of liars, but he know not to lie to God. Amen. 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 I know that because when I read the testimony of Job, and God said, where are you going? He just spit it out. <laughs> he tried to speak in parables, but he put it out there. Amen. I'm just going to it over the end up and down the road. I know what you're up to. Have you considered my servant Job? Amen. Amen. But when God tells Satan, you go, remember, he told Job, amen, why? He told God, oh, Job is only doing that because it's not him. He might not be attached to people, amen. He might not have that type of love, but touch him, skin and bone. Amen. amen. He'll curse you. He said, you do whatever you want to do with him, but you can't take his life. Amen. Satan wanted to take his life, but he couldn't because God said no. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. So here you are, and God speaks, or Jesus, if you will, speaks to that demon of death. And he commanded Lazarus one time. Because how many people in that spirit knew what time it was? Come forth. 
He didn't do the one, two, three strikes you out. He did it one time and one time only. I don't know, there were times when my parents would say, I'm going to tell you this one time and one time only. Anybody had that experience? Those were good parents. <laughs> he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloths. And his face was bound about with a nap. And Jesus said unto them, Lose him. You let him go. Yes. Now I said this this way. You can say that God was speaking to the people around there and telling them to loosen their bandages off of him. But nine out of ten, this is a dead man being raised to life. They probably wanted to run off and leave their shadow. Right. Right. But I believe that the napkins obeyed God. The grave cross obeyed God. How can this be? He's God. Amen. 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 Then many of the Jews, verse 45, which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees and counseled and said, What are we going to do? This man doeth many miracles. If we don't say anything, if we leave him alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans, what their main concern was, shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. And that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus, thank God, should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for the put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. Notice what it says in verse 55. I want you to focus on that. And the Jews pass over. Did it say the Gentiles? This is a Jewish feast. It's not an American feast. It's a Jewish feast. The Jews Passover. Did it take Easter? Did you read anywhere where God connects his death and resurrection with Easter? No. It was the Passover that was to be sacrificed for the sins of the world. This was the time of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. With this feast comes a Sabbath at the beginning and a Sabbath at the end. That didn't count the seventh day Sabbath. Amen. The Jews passed over. If you want to keep a Jewish feast, then you have to recognize all of the Passovers, all of the Sabbaths. Amen. We say we're celebrating. Amen. I guess they're calling it Easter because they're not going to do unleavened bread. You know we're looking for every ounce of leaven we can get. And everything else. We ain't eating no bitter herbs. We eating chocolate and Easter bunnies. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with unleavened bread or the Passover. The Jews' Passover, verse 55, was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to do what? Purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, what think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. Amen. Twelve and one. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover. Now we know According to the Passover, it's the 14th of the month. Amen? Amen? That Passover sacrifice was killed on the 14th. 
Amen. The day is what? 15. And then we're not over in their country. So their time and their dates are different from ours. Amen. Six days before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had they been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary once again a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Michael. Amen. She's a sinner, but she had expensive ointment. Amen? Amen. She loved Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Then said one of his disciples, verse 4, Judas Iscariot, silent son, you know, glory to God, when you got somebody to do wrong, they will connect you with them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Simon had to bear that all his life. His son was the one that betrayed Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know Simon. I'm uh -uh, not Mary's child, I'm uh -uh, Simon's son. Yeah. <laughs> We should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? He wasn't concerned about the poor. He was looking out for himself. Amen. Amen. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and beer what was put therein. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, he went along. Against the day of my burial, yes, she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me, you have not always. Amen. We're talking about, amen, a God that loved the sinners just as much as he loves the people of God. Love us so much, amen, that he put people in the way that they can be saved and they can be delivered. No. Our God loves us. Don't you listen to what that devil tell you. I don't care where you at spiritually. I don't care how out of the way you are and how many times you done fail. God loves you. Oh, yes, he does. Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Verse 21. And you, speaking to us, I know he's talking to the Colossians too, but us too. And you, those who he said, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. You that were alienated by wicked words. He gave his flesh to present us holy and unclaimable. Romans 5, if you will. Romans chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Very familiar scripture. Thank you, Jesus. And he said this verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. How could God not love the ungodly and yet die for them? For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, he put his money where his mouth was. He didn't just tell us that he loved the world, but he said God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So the only problem that some people have 
He said that if they don't believe that Jesus is alive, then salvation they can't receive. But for those that believe Jesus' testimony, that he's going to sit on the right hand of the Father, and if they believe the testimony of Stephen who said, I see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the Father, and they believe that he is very much alive, then salvation is for us. I need you to understand that Jonah got out the will of God. Amen. And when he got out the will of God, he did something very foolish. Amen. He brought God on man's level. And what I mean by that is, amen, did we serve a God that's in all places at all times? Yeah. So you can't run from God. He see you. Amen. My God. amen. So true. He wanted to run from God. He found himself in a digestive process in the side of a whale. Now I need you to know God was in that whale with him. Mm -hmm. my God. Now my understanding is it takes three days to digest food, especially meat. Yeah. Three days. How long was Jonah in the belly's whale? Yeah. I mean the, the whale's belly. Three days. So by right he should have been completely digested and dead, but God was there with him in the belly of hell. out with the stench of all of that whale's belly for three days. His food for three days. You ever get sick on the stomach? It could be an hour later. Amen. And it smells so horrid because it's already going through the digestive process. Can you imagine what Jonah smelled like three days later? He doesn't even know how he survived it because God was in that belly, the belly's with the whale's belly. God was there. God chasing him, but he was keeping him. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. How many people have been chasing and kept at the same time? Oh, yeah. Don't tell me God doesn't love you. Yeah. When he chased his people, he was raising up a deliverer. Yeah. Mercy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. God loves you. With all your mistakes and all your faults. God loves you. He went through much so that we can have hope this time of year. We rejoice around what man calls Easter because we think about all that God did for us. Amen? Easter is mentioned one time in the Bible. Acts 12. Read it with me. Thank you, Jesus. You can't even look up a definition of Easter and see anything in it that has anything to do with Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. Amen. It, there's no connection. Feels good to our flesh, but there's no connection. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 12 and 1. Now about that time, Herod, who was an unbeliever and a sinner, a pagan worshiper, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John. That was one of the ones that said, let us go on right and on and up with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then, notice what it says. Then were the days of unleavened bread. He didn't say those were the days of Easter. He said those are the days of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Now you read the account of unleavened bread in Exodus 12. You're not going to find Easter. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered him into four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after what? Easter. Easter. He's making unleavened bread be Easter. It's not to bring him forth to the people. Amen? God didn't call it. You read the feast of the Lord in Leviticus 23. You're not going to find Easter. As a matter of fact, I didn't see St. Patrick's Day, St. Valentine's, any of them saints in there. I didn't see none of those. Amen? I didn't even see 
4th of July. I didn't see none of the days that the, the feast that we celebrate. And notice, most of the feasts that God had dealt with, amen, remembering the things that God did for them. Amen. Some of them involved fasting. A lot of them had Sabbaths at it. Amen. Hours involved eating. Amen. Having fun. Amen. You don't think much about Jesus. We do tell him thank you, no, amen. And then we grab that chicken bone or we grab whatever we're eating. Amen. The exact opposite. Right. Right. Truly, we can call our day, our feast days holly. And God's a holy. Can you see the difference? Amen. These are the feasts of the Lord. Look for any of ours in there. It's not. I don't want to be a party pooper. I just want to tell the truth. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus. Everybody want to go their own way. And the Bible said, Amen. He said, My spirit will not always drive me. But then, because of Jesus, mm -hmm. because of the word, mm -hmm. Amen. When he decided to destroy man off the face of the earth, mm -hmm. his own word said, If you put out my body, make me a body, I go down. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that it was always about an offering, a sacrificial offering. You always knew that amen had to be some type of goat, uh, some type of lamb, or some type of animal had to lose their life. And the blood that, you know, that whatever was a sacrifice, they always pull it aside and, and make sure that it never was touched by the opposite sex. Amen. He made sure that amen, he would put it in a safe place that it wouldn't be touched. And, that was, and then they would take that animal and they would give that, they would kill, they would slay that animal. And they would take the blood from that animal and they would do whatever God would sprinkle, you know, uh, different things, even Bible said they, uh, almost everything was sprinkled with the blood. But then Jesus being the second man out, but I know somebody about him, amen. He, they did him just like they did the, the, the animal. They took him out outside of town and did what they wanted to do to him. But you know, he sat down at the Passover with his disciples. And he just sat there with them and he broke bread with them and he loved on them. But he said this, I won't eat nor drink of the fruit of this vine until I drink it new to my father's kingdom. Right now, children of God, he's checking it with us. And right now, I'm telling you, man, when the spirit of God begin to fall, amen, he's checking it with us. You know, on the death of Amen. Doing exactly. He didn't pass over no more. He stopped in. Are you listening to me? He told us this. He told he told his mother, so woman, what about to do with you? My hour will not yet come. He told his disciples, said, y'all eat this because this is the Passover. And they ate it. He broke the bread and gave it to them. But when it was time for him to suck off the wine, he said, I'm going to drink of the fruit of this wine. Until I drink and move to my father's kingdom. And then he said, So you go to our father. Because he's just not my father. 
is your father too. So pray our father, which art in heaven, meaning he's your father and my father. Pray our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I need your kingdom to come. Thy kingdom come. Mm-hmm. And they did exactly what he told them to do. They had a problem with their birth. But the Bible said when he was walking along with them, the Bible said he was taken up out of their sight. A cloud received them up out of their sight. And the Bible said when that cloud received them up, the Bible said he was standing, gazing into heaven. And the angel said, Why stand ye gazing into heaven? The same Jesus I feel hope go that way. That is taken up from you shall come in like manner as you see him grow up. Yeah. Go do what he told you to do. Go wait till you can do it with power from on high. And the Bible said they went not down and not over, but they went up into the upper room. And when they got up there, they began to pray. And they only prayed one prayer. They did what Jesus told them to do. He told them to pray. They, 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 they wanted to pray. They, they wanted to pray. You know, you, when you hear people praying, you want to pray like them. So the Bible said they heard John the disciple praying, and, 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 and they said, Jesus, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Yes, yes. He said, You don't need that, son. So all you need to do is pray, Our Father. Everything is going to change now. Which yes, are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And they went up in that upper room, they began to pray on the first day that they entered in. I believe it was about the whatever day it was, the Bible said on the, on the 50th day, the power of the Spirit fell on them. So it had to be about the 40th day. But anyway, they was in that upper room praying the same prayer, our Father. And while they were praying, our Father, Jesus was standing before the Father, talking to somebody, making intercession for his children. He was just standing there talking to his Father. And you just, just imagine in your mind when you go home and you ain't been home in a long time. Amen. All your parents do is for you to stay right there with them. Amen. Can't you just imagine how God felt having his word back with him? But guess what? His word has stayed down here too long. His word, amen, had been here. His word, amen, had, had lived here. His word grew up here. His word, amen, went through the same thing that we went through. He felt like we felt. He felt the things that we felt. He saw the things that we saw. Amen. Are you listening to me, Church of God? Everything that man ever felt, he felt it. But even more. And so he realized that it was something about that flesh that would pull out of that dirt. Needed something else outside of just a rod or mountain. Or he needed, he, 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 they, 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 down the plan and they're praying for you to come. I got to pray our father. They're not mine. They, they, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you, you, you're just not my father, my, my chef anymore. Amen. I kept them while I was with them. But now I know they need me and you. I walk with them every day. But if we were getting them, if we would make our board on the inside of them, we would allow them to open their mouth. Don't say nothing. We do the speaking. But we need to be in there. And that's the way we're going to keep it. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. And the Bible said, Amen. The prayers of the saints begin to go before God as a sweet smelling Savior. Yeah. They smell the room coming from the prayer of our Father, which I did have. I would be thy name, God. Come on. We need you now. Yes. And the Bible said, Suddenly there came a sound out of heaven as a rushing, mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they began to speak with tongues, glowing tongues, like as a fire. And it set upon each of them. Hey, you ever just felt the spirit as it and, and moved over you? Have, have you just been sitting in the prison with somebody all of a sudden? You just feel tongues going all over your body? Have yeah. you ever just church hands with somebody and you can just feel that, yeah. that, 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 that's a glory? Okay. You can see it. Yeah. Talk to 
Oh, I tell you, God help me too. Man, let me tell you something. Knowing that you got him. No weapon. I said no weapon. No weapon. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against thee when you're wrong or right. Oh, so true. Uh, shall condemn. When we repent of our sins and say, Lord, forgive me. Yes. It's yes. over when in the yes. yes. So I don't work out. Now the mistakes I made, I made them. Yes. But guess what? God forgave me. Yes. Now you might not forgive me. You might just hold it to that. Yes. But one thing I do know, I've been forgiven. Yes. And when God forgives me, yes. then I've been forgiven. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish. But they would have everlasting life. Come on, somebody. Now I had to sometimes beat it in you with the word. Sometimes I had to drag it in you with the word. Sometimes I had to just talk you sometimes with the word. But I finally got it in you. When I got it in you, when that light came on, she could use it in God. But when that light came on, Guess what? It was over with. Hallelujah. It was over with. She sent me to the center of the It's all right to get it in a solitary place. It's all right, right. to get it alone. Right. But don't get along and, and, and worry. Don't get along and right. be weary. Right. Don't get along and let this stuff bother you. Right. That's why sometimes it's good to be in the presence of people. Amen. But, amen, when you, if you can get along uh, and it's just you and God, yeah. you're in a good place. Talk to you. you can get along and you'll be right there. That's place you and God, and that's good. But when you're along so at him, and all of a sudden that devil pick up your mind, your mind being snapped over here, your mind being snapped over there. Actually, have to go bend down, bend down, bend down. Never been in jail in my life, but when they put when they cap me down to do them three counties, brother Nate, you remember? Yes, Took me through three counties in Atlanta, Georgia. One, two, three. Capital, oh, field out there. And they drilled, they drilled me that night. Poor good God of mine, but I was fasting. When you fasting, oh, that'll help you. I was already fasting, the Spirit of the Lord was already upon me, and I said, Lord, I thank you. And boy, as long as I was in the Spirit, I was Mr. Muncher, I was, I was a bad. But when I got home that night, when I got home, I couldn't sleep. But when I walk back out that next day and walk in that pulpit, I was bald like a bald man. Yeah. But this is what I said. And I was in the spirit. I said, the person that did this to me, God said, it had been better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and cast into a, a lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that did what they did to me. We was in a revival, 21 days, fasting, seeking the Lord, teaching every night. But guess what? I was okay as long as I was in the spirit. But amen at night. I would lay my head down and try to get a little rest. And I was I was out for all through the night. And she would try to hold me and try to comfort me. You were guy. Because guess what? When I left that room with all them guys, I told them, I said, look here. I said, nothing never been on these arms. You're going to do what you need to do it right now. If not, I'm out of here, sir. But I'm going to need a scripture. Amen. Whoever told this lie and did what they did, the message was just revival. Amen. I said, it had been better for them to have a millstone tied around the neck and God's going to deal with them now. And I promise you, for God to do. I was on Thursday. Both of them was in the hospital before Saturday. One was in a coma. Got beat in a coma. The other. Chitty Faye. That one was in that coma. Said that. God spoke to me. He said, you touch my nerve. And. They finally. Called and repented of it, accepted 
repentance. What I'm saying to you, amen, God, if you know God is there, you, have to, you don't have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. See, you got to move from the old into the new. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'll tell you something. Some of y'all still trying to hang out, hang out in the winter. Man, don't you know spring is coming? Right. Don't you know, amen, the weather's changing? Don't you know things is changing? Because of time and a, a season for all things under the sun. Mm -hmm. Amen. Leave from where you're at yes. and go to where you need to be right now. Mm -hmm. And that's in God. You listen to me. I thank God for the word tonight. Yeah. I thank God for the hallelujah. And the message that she's preaching tonight, it sounds so crazy. It sounds so crazy. Who is gonna say the, the night? Who's gonna say the night start or the day starts? You know, when the sun goes down. That's crazy. Who's going to believe that when the sun go down, you enter into, into evening? And when midnight, then you got mid evening. And then after midnight, you got late evening. When the sun rises in the morning, you got early morning. And then when the, when, at mid, at mid, mid, midday, then you got, you know, mid morning. And then any time after that, you got late morning. Morning does not go out until the sun go down. When the sun go down, evening is here. And your day, your new day begun. Now the day is the day that everybody said Jesus died. That's the biggest lie ever been told. And preachers, amen, they need to go back and learn their arithmetic. Amen, that's what we used to call it, arithmetic. All they got to do is do a little ad. Take me two hours. It's three days and three nights. Talk to me, somebody. And we do know that Jesus died in the ninth hour. That was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We believe and know that in some time between the, the ninth hour, which is 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and between the eleventh hour, which is 5 o'clock in the afternoon, talk to me, somebody. They put him into a sepulcher. That was on an evening, not Friday evening. You cannot get Friday evening to Sunday morning. You won't get three days out of that. So they need to stop that. If they're going to say he died Friday, don't say nothing about three days. Just say he died Friday and got up a day and a half later. Don't say he died Friday evening and he got up Sunday morning, three days and three nights. I mean, that just don't sound, it ain't right. You cannot get three days from the time of the sun going down until Sunday morning, that's a day and a half. Okay, you, 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 so they need to leave that alone. If they're going to preach it, just preach it. Died Friday evening, got up Sunday morning, and don't send up about no three days and three nights. But the Bible said, as Jonah was in the well belly, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. He did. He stayed there three days. And I want you to understand, they did not put him in the grave in the morning at the rising of the sun. They put him in the grave at the going down of the sun. Amen. Not on the Sabbath. Amen. It was, the, uh, uh, it was a Sabbath, a high Sabbath was coming in at the time Jesus they took him off the cross. They took him off the cross quickly because they knew that, amen, a Sabbath day was coming in. They called that Sabbath day a high day. It's easy to get it. It's so easy to get it. It's so easy to get it, but then it ain't going to sound right. But I'm going to know just because it don't sound right, that don't mean it ain't right. I thank God for the word tonight. I thank God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the Lord for you. Amen. For the, for, for, the, for, for the word of God. I thank God for now. Amen. When we can't get what they got, amen, we still can get what we need. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Yeah. He said, Come on to me, all you that are laboring, don't have it later, I give you rest. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Talk about the pump, you learn of me. Mm -hmm. You said, My yoke is easy. I'm a burden is light. Talk to me, somebody. He said, abide in me, let my words abide in you, you can to what you will. I preached the other night, I talked about the word. The word made everything. Everything that you see, even though man called themselves designing everything, but the word God made it. And God gave man wisdom to trim and to put these designs in those trimmings 
talk to me somebody. But everything that your eyes can see and that that you can, God made it with his word. That's why he said, abide in me and let my words abide in you. He said, then you can ask what you will. Not only, it goes deeper than that. Amen. Not only can you ask, but you can speak out of your mouth. Because God gave you the power to speak his word. Are you listening to me? To speak his word. His word is it's forever seven. His word is powerful. His word will get you in. Words will get you in a mess. Words will get you in a mess. Words can get you in a mess. I remember it was a man that I loved real well. Not in no funny way, but I knew God was he gave him to me for the, to be a part of this ministry. But you know, he kept lagging back, kept lagging back, kept lagging back. He'll come every now and then, you know, and then he'll finally go send him. He'll get him make all them vows and we're going to get in and the Lord really bringing us your way. Then next thing you know, you don't see him no more. But one night, he came here and said in the service, like he said that tonight. And he came and said, Apostle, I need to speak with you. And he did. And listen to me, since that night, he ain't missed very much the service. But he came. He came he was in a situation, a bad situation. He saw no way out of it. Not only did he didn't see no way out of it, but he even just told on himself, forgive me for the sin. But being who God called me to be, I said, before he left that night, I said, take the sin, the sin, just forgive me. It's over with, sir. He didn't see it. He didn't see it at all. Made him feel better that night. He went home, but when he left out, he know got to go down that road. Well, he got to he was back to him in the game. But every time he walked through the door, I dropped that word back on him every time. Drop him right back on him. Drop him right back on him. He feel all right, but I could, I could see the weight falling off his body. I saw him go from, from, from I don't know what you but when you when I looked around your pants were falling off of your coat. Days later he began to go down so bad. But I kept driving it on. Are you listening to me? And I saw that he was getting what he needed while he was here. But he couldn't hold it. When he left, he would go through again. Until that one day I was preaching and pride was on so bad. I'm walking to them aisles. I was preaching up in the church of the Holy Ghost. And I came back. I said, you know, my back turned. But I was, I was, that, that pride hit him so hard. And I spoke with authority. He said, get on my back right now. I, he jumped on my back. And he, and he got halfway up. Then I yanked him up. Then I brought him to this altar. And dropped him down right here. And, he was, and dropped him down right there. And I slid him off my back. Put my arm around him and begin to minister to him. When he got up that time, he got up really believing. And I told him, let your worries be few now. I said, God said, be slow to speak, slow to hear, very slow to rap. And guess what? He went in, thought it was over with. Yes, Walked out scot free. Oh, you can't say that. See, so being taken, then so is that man. Right. It worked. Oh, I better that is. It's over with. Oh, it's over with. Oh, I can on that car. I can get that there. I, I can rock, run a scarlet dog right now. But I feel the power of God in the hip. It exploded just in our time. I said, Hallelujah! It happened. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. It happened right then and right now. Oh, so the Lord said, "Thank you, Lord." But guess what? We don't walk by. We walk by faith. We don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. 
agree what they say. We walk by faith. Faith moves God. Faith moves God. Faith moves God. And the power says the prayers of the righteous. A brother's merch. And I do my words might not be like your one. My words might not be like theirs on TV. But I promise you, for God in heaven, if I tell you, I might use wisdom and nothing sometimes. I might say, in essence, build with your house. Wisdom and build with that. We have wisdom and build with the house. But I promise you, for God in heaven, whatever I say, I'm not trying to be funny. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. But sometimes we can't see it and sometimes we don't even feel it. But we don't walk with feelings. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And I got to say it tonight. Are you listening to me? Because they, this is Good Friday. Thank God for it. They named this Friday Good Friday. But I thank God for yesterday that was good Thursday. Yeah. And I thank God for the day before me because it was good Wednesday. And I thank God for the day before me it was good Tuesday. And I thank God for the day before me it was good Monday. And I thank God for the day before me it was good Sunday. And I thank God for the Sabbath. Amen.